Well, as a professional rugby player, I'm sure you would have been able to deal with a bear, no problem. Do, do you mean my, my ability to run? Is that, is that <laughs> well, you go, just go for it. So when did you start playing rugby? Um, I, I, I started in um, comprehensive school or high school uh, over, over in Canada. Uh, uh, it, it really came down to, um, I had, again, I played a lot of ice hockey uh, and was just going into um, high school and decided I wanted to try my hand at American football. And I went home and uh, my uh, my dad being of a sort of British background said, well, look, if, if you're going to try American football with the helmets and the pads and everything else, I want you to try rugby as well and just compare the two and see how you go. And uh, uh, so I said, fair enough, Dad, I'll you know, give, give it a go. And uh, uh, and I took to both. I played both uh, throughout uh, high school. Um, but uh, just the, uh, I think it was the culture of having a drink after the game and all of that sort of stuff. You didn't necessarily get that with American football and you got that, um, you know, it probably wasn't, it wasn't old enough at that point, but sort of, as I moved on, uh, it's a social my rugby career is a lot more social over there and, uh, um, you know, got into a little bit more serious rugby, but I suppose probably when I played, it was a case of, um, you know, there's still a lot more, a lot more social than, than, some of the professionals are these days, which are very much about trying to, uh, you know, build build their uh, um, uh, physique and making sure they're in, you know, uh, tip top shape and everything else. It, it you know, it, it was uh, uh, it was a different day back then, and it was a bit more, you know, a bit more social around uh, around the games. Um, when did you decide that you were going to try and pursue the game professionally? Um, I'd, I'd played to a pretty high standard within, uh, Canada. Um, I'd played, uh, uh, for the provincial team. I'd traveled all across Canada playing, uh, in various national tournaments and things. Um, uh, I'd played for most of the, um, uh, Canadian team age groups as I, as I came along. As in the national team? As in the national team, yeah. Um, and what was, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge rugby fan. What, a Canada one of the, I mean, I know they're not, I feel like the real top table are the rugby, but they're yeah, pretty good standard, aren't they? They're struggling a bit at the moment. Are they? Um, uh, as, as things go through, you know, uh, various times. Um, back then, they were uh, they were much better, much stronger, um, which made the, the challenge even, even more difficult to try and get to the full full men's side. Um, so I'd, I'd, um, I'd done reasonably well there and uh, I was... Uh, pretty settled in a um, in, in some full time work I was doing in the, in the business environment, um, and just got a call one day and asked if I would be interested in coming across. And I thought, gosh, you got to do this. You got you got to try it. And who and, was it who gave you it. a call? With? Uh, there was um, there was a scout over in uh, in Ontario who was um, looking for uh, various different players. For um, uh, I ended up playing for Rotherham over here for a season. Rotherham. Um, uh, and uh, it was just just one of their scouts that they had at the time. Uh, they had an injury. They needed to try and fill that gap pretty quickly. Um, uh, and I I fit the bill, I suppose. So I came over on a trial initially. Um, there was another uh, Canadian came along with me for for a, for a different position. Um, so it was it's quite nice to at least have somebody sure. else there that was a similar background of things, um, and and really enjoyed the experience. Um, I, it was it was the structure of, of things, um, uh, structure of the professional game at that time wasn't quite there. And I suppose, um, if if I'm honest, um, my my focal point from a rugby perspective was was probably a little bit more on the amateur side and the the um, side of enjoying a little bit more than than what I was as, as a professional. And decided that look, you know, it's 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 probably not the right time for me to pursue this. I was, um, you know, 27. 28 and uh had 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 a solid sort of six years of working and i thought you know what it's a bit of a risk isn't it yeah, to just pursue and, and, that and so uh so i went back and um uh, got back into into business still played a lot um uh, really enjoyed it uh came back over in 2004 and played for coventry for a bit as well uh um as it um uh, more as a sideline to a business i'd opened at the time over here um uh and uh and really ran its course, played a little bit more, and then had children, and that took all your time on weekends and everything else. So it was one of those. So, uh, so I look back on it with fond memories, and, and we, you know, still support uh, a couple of local clubs to us as well. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's done a lot for me. It's uh, allowed me to travel quite extensively, um, places like Japan and, uh, and and various you know various other places. And it must have been from a fitness perspective. 
you know, back in the day, you must have really had to, you know, commit to your training and and, and strength yeah. work and speed because rugby is such a, you need such a diversity of skills, don't you? You've got yeah. the, the strength, the speed, the tactical side, the teamwork. It always looks to me like one of the most challenging sports there is. Yeah, and I think, I, I think, I think you're right. Um, certainly nowadays, it's a lot more, there's a lot more science that goes behind it in terms of training regimes and everything else. I think... Um, Back when I was playing, it was um, you were kind of left to your own devices to some degree. Um, the science wasn't there yet. It, it was a case of if you, as an individual, wanted to go and train, um, you you got out of it what you sort of put into it. Really, yeah. um, I was lucky because I'd, I'd had a, um, quite a strong uh, work ethic from from coming from ice hockey. I played at a reasonable level with mm. ice hockey, and uh, and that allowed me to sort of step into the rugby side of things and uh, and, and really carry on with that. So uh, so it's uh, overall, I suppose, um, and I think we talked we've talked about this before. Um, you know, sport is is a fantastic sort of um, um, environment for for people to sort of. Um, almost learning the, the, the ropes when you're looking at, at trying to run a business. Um, it's all about teamwork. It's all about um, uh, leadership. It's all about being able to suppress your ego when somebody else is trying to lead. It's uh, it's about being able to uh, celebrate the wins, mm. but also, you know, celebrate the, the defeats and the learning behind that and uh, be able to recognize when, um, you know, when, when somebody has got the better of you and, um, we were talking today and it, in fact, it's, uh, it's interesting. I think we, uh, we, we, um, uh, we're talking about the, the managers in the premiership at the moment. And, and one of the things that, uh, in football, I should mm, say, rather than rugby, yeah. um, uh, one of the things that's encouraging nowadays is you've got a, a group of managers that, um, are all for sort of sharing the successes. And if they don't feel their team's played very well or they feel somebody's played a lot better, they're not afraid to turn around and no, say, that's hey, right. do you know what? We credit work, got, credit's due. We just got beat today because yeah. we didn't play as well as, yeah. as somebody else and they've had a fantastic game. And I think that's really honorable. And I think um, sport these days sort of, sort of gives you that um, – it's a self belief to have confidence in yourself, whether win or loss, and I think it's uh, it, it's great for um, you know for helping people, particularly in the business world. Be well, able I was to carry I, I was I was going to say because there's there's, there's a, a message there about learning from failure and um, being gracious in success, which I think you can take forward to the business world. I mean, it 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 always seems to me to be a bit of a cliche to talk about. You know, I, I I'm not afraid to fail and that sort of thing. Mm. But if you if you look back at your career in business with hindsight, I personally find that some of the most valuable experiences is when things haven't gone so well. Yeah, I agree. And yeah. where where the the key, isn't it, is you tend when you're in business to to put pound signs on a certain level of failure. Yeah. I, what I try to do is think, well, what will I gain in the future through the learning mm -hmm. from that experience? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Is, is, how, how do you deal with just in business when things don't go as you'd, as you'd yeah. hoped? How, how do you deal with it like emotionally and also in just in terms of your business response? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's um, a really interesting question. I, I think to some degree, um, providing that you have a uh, strong financial um, model, uh, often, um, it, it's, it's, I suppose, I suppose you go through various stages of business. The first stage of the business is, is, is often just getting going and you're, you're trying to just fight for, you know, existence, if, yeah. if, you, if you will, and, uh, not to sort of hemorrhage too much money while you're Correct. doing that. But, but I think, um, you know, once you get, once you get past that and get, get into sort of a model and a rhythm with things, it's, it's about almost doing the planning and looking beyond the finances and looking and, and yeah, there's, there's an, there's a, there's an element that makes up the profitability and the revenue and all of that sort of stuff and how much is left at the end for, for, for the business um, and uh, the expenses that go along with that. But, but quite frankly, a lot of it is about, you know, t taking away the importance of that financial element and actually just building it into a uh, a model and yeah. building it into a um, a model that uh, um, you know 
uh, that, that you repeat. And, and if you're having success with something, go back to the things that are making you successful. If you are, um, you know, going down a down a path where you've been unsuccessful a number of times, you analyze that and review it. And did I put my best foot forward here, or should I be changing the way I do some of these things? And um, so, so I think it's about being honest with yourself. Um, uh, one of the uh, one of the original uh, business partners that, that um, I started the business with, and um, uh, you know, he he always used to talk about you know, can you can you look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and 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 say, have I have I have I done my best here? Have I put my best foot forward? Um, and often um, by communicating that message through your entire team, um, you can try and create a, a business where people are um, uh, entrepreneurial in the spirit. Um, yes, we don't want everybody going off in different tangents, but we all want them to have, you know, a level of responsibility, engagement in the business, so that um, the directionally, the direction that they're going is 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 a similar ethos to uh, um, to to the to the business itself. And I think it's um, it's just about constantly being rational and being able to review those um, uh, you know decisions that haven't necessarily gone the right way, um, and uh, and then and then celebrate when you do get it right and try and do more of those, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Um, but you also equally get down to a little bit of the sports side of things with the wins and losses and, and you, um, excuse me, you, you certainly do, uh, um, you know, it, it, despite the way you organize yourself and put the strategy behind things and, uh, uh, invest in the, in the decisions that you're making things, you don't always get it, get no. it right. And, and, uh, particularly when you're dealing with, um, you know, with, with customers and, and, uh, um, you know, I, I, I think back to, uh, opportunities that I really wanted to win. It would have been a very strategic win for us as a, as a business to bring certain clients on. Um, we didn't win it. And you look back on it and you think, do you know what? probably wasn't the right time for us and what can we learn from that and um i suppose from our from our perspective um we've got very good at being able to analyze and understand that um uh and uh, and as a result of that get much better at, at doing things and we recognize um what makes us successful and so now what we start to do is we talk about that a lot more in terms of what makes us successful um it's very difficult because you you um, you you're 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 walking that sort of tightrope between people thinking you're arrogant and and uh, all of that. But sure. by the same token, you're saying, well, you know, I, I I'm not arrogant. I just, I just you know, believe I in yourself very very well. Yeah, you and, believe you believe yeah, in yourself. So. It's it's that it's that self belief which leads to people yeah. meeting challenges. Yeah.